This is the plaintiff, Paula. She says she and the defendant have been friends since the fourth grade. And when she needed a place to stay during her divorce, she let her move into her home. Unfortunately, the woman brought bed bugs with her. She infested her home with them, then turned around and stole $6,000 from her and was arrested. They are clearly friends no more. She had to get an expensive exterminator. She had to throw away her furniture. And she's here suing her former friend for the $5,000 she's now owed. This is the defendant, Michelle. She says she moved in with the plaintiff to help her with her dog-sitting business. One of her customers brought the bugs into her house. That's when her longtime friend turned evil. That's right, her personality changed. She lied to the cops and got her arrested for stealing. And this woman has some darn nerve suing her because she's the one who's owed money, certainly not the plaintiff. She's accused of bugging out a friend. The defendant has filed a counter suit for $3,370 for stolen property and an illegal eviction. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant is a childhood friend who was going through hard times, so she moves in with her and brings in bed bugs. The defendant says she moved in to help her with her dog sitting business, and a customer brought the bed bugs in. It's the case of you bite worse than the bed bugs. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, man. Paula, Michelle, how long have you known each other, Paula? I uh, met Michelle in the fourth grade. And d were you good friends back then? Yeah, we were best friends. How long did you remain best friends before life takes you in your own ways? Until our mid-20s. And then you reconnected recently? Yeah, uh, on and off through the years. And then Michelle reached out to me in June of 2018 on Facebook. All right. And then at some point, the decision is made that she's going to move into your place. How did that yep. decision get made? She spent uh, the month of July on and off at my home. Um, she lived in a one-bedroom studio apartment. And um, the second or third week of July, she told me that her lease was ending on July 31st. And would I consider renting out uh, an extra bedroom to her month to month? So you say yes. Do you live alone or does anybody else live with um, you? I live alone. I own a home. Okay. So you say yes, and then the plan was she would move in when? On August 1st. And um, does she? Yes, yeah, she moved in on August 1st. So through the month of July, let me backtrack. Through the month of July, because she was staying with me so often, I let her move um, her clothes, some of her clothes and her personal belongings. When we did the final walkthrough with the landlord, Michelle- You were there for that? Mm -hmm. And um, Michelle asked about getting her security deposit back. And the landlord said, uh, well, no, Michelle, you're not getting, you've been here for eight months and we had to, uh, we had to treat your apartment uh, twice during those eight months for bed bugs. And I was like, you had to do what? So I asked the landlord about it and they explained to me everything that happened. And what was it that happened? I, um, I had no idea. There were bed bugs in that building. I had no idea. Right, and but there was bed bug infestation and it, while, I, while you were living there. No, I didn't have anything. I'm sorry. Like that. Did the land, did she just make up that whole conversation with the, the landlord? The, the landlord did say bed bugs, but I didn't know that beforehand. Before bringing my all my things to Paula's house, I found out that day that I moved out with the lock. That's the day you find out that you had bed bugs in yeah. the apartment. Mm-hmm. You know, bed bugs are pesky little critters that make their presence known. You're scratching just to, happens to me all the time. <laughs> happens to me in every bed bug case. I, in two seconds, I'm going to start scratching. Okay, so what so, ends up happening? You, I, you don't reconsider having her live with you? No, I You just I think it's one of those things. All right, so, you, so she I moves mean, in and what so, happens? Well, what I did was I immediately called... Um, an exterminator. And what'd they find? And um, they found that in the room that Michelle had been staying in for that month of July, that the mattress, the bed frame, um, the dresser that she had put her clothes in, the closet, there were bed bugs in that. May I see the report that, that says that? Um, yes. Thankfully, they did not find them in my room. And so did they spray that room? They actually had to spray the entire home because if you miss one, 
then it starts all over. So th the procedure is that they spray it once, they come in two weeks, they spray it again. $1,431. So um, so now, why are you suing for a bedroom set, a new mattress, and laundry? Let's go over that. Okay, so uh, when they looked in the drawers and everything. You're talking about the bedroom set that's in the spare yep, bed? Yep, only the bedroom set. Okay, bedroom. do you have pictures of that? Um, and why wouldn't a $1,500 extermination take care of it? Why would you have to throw that out? Because there's no way to be 100% sure that they Says can who? The exterminator. Do you have that in writing from the exterminator that, that you couldn't keep the furniture? I do not have that okay, in writing. Okay, do you have a picture of the furniture that you threw out? You know, I do have a picture of it on my phone, and I'm sorry, that was the only thing we couldn't get to come through. Do you have it on your phone? Through. Yes, That's fine. Let me see it on your phone. It would. Yep. What proof do you have that the value of the mattress you threw out was $1,300? Um, the mattress actually... They were more. I don't have receipts for that. Do you that. have any proof I, I of don't your have, case I where don't you want thirteen hundred dollars for the value of a mattress any. you threw out? No, yes I don't or no. Have any Do you have receipts. a picture of the mattress? Yes or no? I don't. Do you, did you find a picture of the furniture? Um, no, I have to look. Okay, you so go ahead and look at that, and I want yes. to give the floor to you a second. Okay, good. So you move in there. If I can explain to you what was going on, she has a dog sitting business, so she has a lot of traffic in and out of her home. Um, also, her. I'm sorry, weren't all the bed bugs found in the room you were occupying? They were in the house. In the house. They had to do the whole house. No, I know they did the whole house, but all the actual bed bugs found were in your room. No, they right? were all just in my room. They were in her room, in the room that her um, nephew was sleeping in. And he was coming in and out of the house. How long after your landlord said, You're not getting your security deposit back because you owe me rent and because you brought bed bugs here, was that? It was. August. It, it yeah, it was August 22nd was the date of service. But I legally lived there from August 1st till she threw me out. I believe it was the 9th. Let's talk about the throwing out. Okay. I have what is your version of why she threw you out? She um, accused me of stealing from her, which, of course, I d never did that. Stealing what? Um, she said jewelry and money. I had a public defender in Rochester. And if I could have afforded to defend myself with a, you know, a, a, a regular attorney, I wouldn't. A real in, in attorney? A, I mean, yeah. right, right. No, but that's not true. The, but okay. Some of the best lawyers I ever, I was a prosecutor yeah. for 10 years, and some of the best lawyers well, I ever litigated, not, virtually all of the best lawyers I ever litigated against were public defenders. So I don't under, are you going to explain why you pled guilty? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So because you pled guilty to stealing how much money? Um... She said it was $6,000. Okay. Um, absolutely not. I didn't do steal anything. I never stole in my but life. But is that why she threw you out? They, I don't know exactly what the reason was. Because okay. According to you, what after. was the reason you threw her out? August 7th, um, my 18-year-old cousin was at my home, and she went to go and get uh, some lemonade out of my refrigerator. I had a box with lemonade in it. And um, many whiskey bottles fell out of that, out of the lemonade. And my cousin turned to me and is, what do you start drinking now? And th the only other person that lived there was Michelle. And I called Michelle in the house and I said, what are you doing? Are you hiding alcohol around my home? And she said, um, okay, listen, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to, I need to confess to you. Um, I have a problem with alcohol, and I needed to get something. And I just said, I, I said, I, I just can't do this. I go, too much has happened in the short period of time. And I so said, so you drove her to the hospital. So she told me to take her to the hospital, which was and just down the street. And did you check into the hospital? Um, yes, she drove me there, and this is my story. What did you tell the hospital? Um, she was doing all the talking. Okay. And what I, did she tell the hospital? She told the hospital that um, she thought I was, was going crazy and she, for mental evaluation. She called the police to escort me into the hospital. Uh, she, all these police officers, and they checked me at the hospital and they released me. When I got out of the hospital, I called her. She said, are you at my house? She, do, she said, you can't go back there. I said, I have all my belongings. So do you go right back to the house? 
Yes, I did. All I could take was two suitcases. Do you end up coming back to the house again? Um, yes, she told me I could come back and get some things. Okay, so when you come back that second time, what do you get? Because you have a counterclaim against her claiming that there's all kinds of stuff you left behind mm -hmm. of value. Yes. So you ha you go back a second time and what do you get? She, she had me arrested. She, the first time she coerced me into, um, into um, signing this, these papers. That's the first time? That was, that was the first time. OK, but let's I talk about the papers. OK. Let me see the papers she had you sign. Um, that's the lawyer, my lawyer. Um, Anything else? I got to relive this in my head. OK. So she gives you some papers, and she makes you sign them how? There's a reason. Right. I was up for two days. I was walking the street. I was down at the beach. I had to sleep in the church um, you know, garden. I, I, Are you an alcoholic? No. No, she claims that I am. I'm um, asking you. Yeah. Um, and for instance, Do you drink? Occasionally. Just, Do you have blackouts when you drink? No. Mm -mm. No, I don't drink excessively like that. No. So according to you, you're, you're, you're sleeping on the streets, and you're sleep deprived, and that's how she made you sign these? No. I signed the one paper. She hid the other ones. I didn't. I didn't even see you those signed papers. The one paper with your signature mm -hmm. says everything above is true. What did you think you were signing? I didn't. I didn't see anything. I thought I was signing to get my belongings back. Um, I hereby acknowledge the above is true and factual, and I accept accountability and all responsibility, financially and otherwise associated with my actions listed above. Never saw that. That's not signing for your documents. Well, that, no, that's the page that has your signature. Oh yeah. I am signing this freely and free of pressure to do so. You actually took a video of her I, signing it. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that was her reading it. Yeah, okay. Then there then and the then phone you have rang. This. <laughs> and then that's her after she read it signing it. Right. But there should and, be and audio. And the question on there. is what's it? Her she's claiming that she did not know about this two-page confession you have her sign. I that think that can, wasn't with it. If That's you what look she's at claiming. it, I think you can tell how many pages oh, are there. Oh, there's tons of pages here. OK, you look very peacefully looking through papers and signing. Why am I to believe that you were coerced yeah. into signing anything? As I said, I was up for two days, two nights, sleeping That's outside. not her coercing you. Well, You're saying you regret signing it. That's different. Well, According to the police report, here's what happens. You go back in there at a time you're not allowed to. You are look this, and this is the, the statement that you end up signing, which I presume was part of the evidence against you in the criminal case. You end up signing a statement saying that you, let me not paraphrase, let me read right, right through it. I saw rings and took them, but planned to give them back when she gave me my belongings back from outside. I couldn't find my license and DSS card and knew where, what's DSS card? Um, it's a government check that I get. For what? Month. For Is there a disability? Bipolar. I took it just because I needed it. I was homeless, but I was going to give it back. She knew it would be before winter. I let her know I was sorry for everything with a note. You actually left a note saying you're sorry for everything. I want to see everything. the note. That I need to see because I never signed well, anything. It was part of your criminal case, wasn't it? Yeah, but that doesn't mean I did it. I was, I was, I couldn't so defend myself. So you saw myself. it in the criminal case, didn't you? I, I haven't gone to court yet. For what? For the plea deal I had to take. Uh, uh, didn't you already she, plead guilty? Yes, I, I pled guilty, but I'm not done with court yet. You're not sentenced no, yet. Yeah, no, I'm not. What's going on with the criminal case? Um. I have to go back on the second. Um, judge. And part of what you agreed to was to repay the money that, according to the the state, your plea of guilty and the plaintiff you took. When does she end up getting arrested by the police after signing these documents? Yeah, she signed the documents on. The so when you, you had her sign the documents and then you called the police. Why is it that when good friends move in together they become enemies? Because they get exposed to each other's bad habits. Ah. What do you say? No, I agree with that. Familiarity breeds contempt? Absolutely. Yeah. Words to live by going inside the courtroom. I actually called the police on the 8th when she was on my property. She this is a video of, of her the police being arrested arresting her. On the is 14th. this the same day she signs the documents? Nope. She signed. What day are the police arresting her? They're arresting her on the 14th. Why is she back at your house? Because she was unable to take all of her stuff 
That so did you let her in on the 14th? Into the backyard where her stuff was on the 14th, yes. Did you let her into the house to get, she according never, to her, she, she has never, a bunch of furniture and all, antique furniture and all this other stuff? Did she ever I bring any? Had, no, no. According to her, she left an antique table, a flat screen TV, four heirloom China dolls worth $400, two bracelets. I actually have um, something. Did she leave anything in your house? No. Tell me about the sliding door you're suing for. What happened with the sliding door? Uh, Michelle was um, staying with me in July, and she told me that she felt dizzy and passed out and fell against the sliding glass door. This and is a sliding glass door that's what, a I'm closet? I'm sorry, it's a, it's a closet mirrored door. Okay, do you have a picture of that? I do. Did you fall against the mirrored closet? No, I did not. When did that happen? Uh, that happened... It was either late June or early July. Do you have any evidence to support that it cost $247? Or? I do. I handed it to him. Okay. So what you have is the replacement cost at Home Depot, correct? Correct. That's the $247, right? Correct. What is $550 for laundry, which you upped from $350 originally? What is that? Um, what it was is what... It's probably a lot less than what it cost. I had to take everything from her room, all towels, everything that was in the house had to go and be laundered and bagged. Okay, for can the I bag please see proof of $550 in laundry bills? I don't know. All right, how that. do you think I'm going to award it to you if you're not mm -hmm. even going to prove it to me? I mean, okay. it's, it's quarters at a laundry. Yeah, okay. Room. Okay. And then what's your proof of the cost of a new mattress? And did you ever find the picture you wanted to show no, me? I didn't find them. Okay. So you have no evidence of the bedroom set that you threw out. Um, you have no evidence of the mattress. Now, you have, and what's good for the goose is good for the gander, you have no evidence of having left any of this stuff in there. On your counterclaim against her, um, I find that you're unable to prove entitlement to $3,370 in missing items. On her claim against you, I find in her favor in the amount of the extermination bill of $1,431. And I have to tell you, this is one of the first times I've found that. Um, because usually when bed bugs happen and everybody's pointing the finger at each other, the only ones who know where they came from are the bed bugs, and the bed bugs don't talk. <laughs> but in your case, you actually have an issue in the last apartment. And I think that that's different. Plus the mirror, which is, quite frankly, candidly, classic evidence of that you have a problem that needs to be addressed. All right. And you cannot self, listen to me, listen to me. Forget about all this stuff. All this is about stuff. You gotta take care of yourself, all right? And you gotta make some changes, and the changes, you cannot have, I'm sure that I won't be the first person to tell you that alcohol and your diagnosis are not the best idea, right? I don't drink heavily. I don't. Okay, you just shouldn't drink at all because your opinion, because the mirror is kind of the evidence of that. Kind of the evidence of that. Okay, what I find about... it, we're done. Okay. I find in favor of the plaintiff, not in the amount she's asking for, but in the amount of the exterminator bill in the mirror, $1,678. Any restitution for stolen money was handled and is being handled in the criminal case and is not part of this lawsuit. Okay. Good luck, folks. Thank you. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Doug's in the hallway with the litigants. So the plaintiff is going to get $1,670-some dollars back. Michelle, I know this is a very uh, unpleasant experience yes, for you. Right. Do you have anything you want to um, say? Just say it. She, she did it again. She's, she wanted money, and she, now she's getting it. Um, it's not true. All the things that she did to me, kicking me out of the home and everything, it was, I didn't bring any bugs in that house. I never. She well, had dogs coming in and out. People. Her she nephew. had enough, there was enough evidence to convince the judge that oh. that's right. Are you one of her friends who's helping yes, her? Yes, sir, I am. Going to try and help her, keep her. Oh, yes, sir. That's my my reason for living. Okay, good luck. Good <laughs> luck you. to you, Thank Michelle. You, Doug. Thank you very much. Uh huh. Paula is on her way out of the courtroom. I mean, kind of a strange story of a friendship yeah. that began, yeah. like a hundred years ago, yes. right? Yeah. A long time ago. Yes. It's unfortunate. It it is very unfortunate. So. And it's still going on, court cases. Are you involved in that, the yeah. court case? Yeah, the criminal yeah. case yeah. still, yes. It's sad. You're glad this is almost over? I'm glad it's almost over. I mean, it's 
it's bittersweet because I want her to be the Michelle that I knew, you know, when I was 10, when I was 20, when I was 30. And it, I want her to get the help that she needs. And well, it's not really a monetary thing. But Hopefully she can. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. You're yeah. very welcome. Thank you. Harvey? You know, Doug, the judge gave the defendant some life advice at the end, and that really is what it's all about, where people can walk out better people.